Today, we are going to talk about physiology of auditory system. Under this topic, today we will cover the mechanism of hearing. Mechanism of hearing. First of all, let me draw the necessary figures. Okay, now that I've finished uh, making a part of pictures, so <clears throat> first of all, in the mechanism of hearing, uh, what happens is the sound is collected by this pinna. And when the sound falls on the spinner, it collects the sound and the sound goes from this way, from this way and it goes into this, this external auditory meatus pathway and it strikes on this tympanic membrane and this is the handle of malleus it is one of the three ossicles of the ear and uh, once and this is the pathway for the pharyngotympanic tube and this is the middle ear this is the external ear external ear this is the middle ear middle ear and this part this part is the internal ear so the sound is heard in this mechanism and this mechanism can be divided into three parts the first one let me write this the first one is conduction of the sound conduction and the second one is transduction transduction and the third one is you know the third one is conduction of neural impulse of the brain or simply we tell the neural pathway so what happens first of all in the conduction is the sound enters from the spina then it goes all the way through this external auditory meatus and it strikes in this tympanic membrane so this is all that happens in conduction part and furthermore in the same conduction the you know the sound goes from this handle of the malleus to the incus and from the incus it goes into the stapes and from the stapes foot plate it is transferred into the internal ear you know the vibration is transferred into the internal ear and from here the mechanical energy of the sound is transferred transducted into the electrical impulses so now that we have covered this conduction pathway the sound enters from here it strikes the tympanic membrane from the tympanic membrane through the three ossicles it is transferred into the internal ear I mean the vibration is transferred into the internal ear. Now let's come into the transduction. In transduction, what happens is once the tympanic membrane is vibrated by the sound and the vibration is transferred into the foot plate. And in transduction, the vibration is transferred from this you know this cochlear fluid here are cochlear fluids you know this is a bony labyrinth so here are perilymphs perilymphs and in the cochlear duct there is endolymph okay so up to here the sound or the vibration when it comes up to this cochlear fluids it is still conduction then 
Transduction is just a process of conversion of the mechanical energy of the sound into the electrical energy. So for that, let me draw another picture. So this is the picture of cochlea that I made here. And this is the picture we see when we cut the cochlea, holy structure of the cochlea into coronal section. And among the, you know, 2.5 turns like this, one, two, and two point seven five. Sorry, yeah. Um, many authors say the cochlea is, you know, turned into two point five or two point seven five uh, turns. So this, you know, this cochlea, if we make this way, in a sorry, in a vertical manner, this is one. Uh, let me make another. Okay, this is one turn, and this is another turn. And this is another turn. So if we cut the cochlea in this way, in coronal section, in this plane, then it will seem like this. We are seeing just one part of this. Okay, let me draw this big here. And this is the bigger picture here. So in the coronal section, we see a membrane here. This is the basilar membrane. This basilar membrane extends from this lamina. Okay, the basilar membrane extends from this spiral lamina of the cochlea. And there is on this basilar membrane, there rests a special structure called organ of corti. Okay, the organ of corti is the one of the important parts of the auditory system. Okay, let me draw the organ of cordy here. The organ of cordy consists of tunnel, okay, tunnel of cordy. This tunnel of cordy consists of, you know, inner hair cell, which is flask shaped, and outer hair cell, which is cylindrical in structure. They are arranged in two to three or three to four rows. And from them, special kind of hair arises. Okay, special kind of hair arises. This is a structure of hair. And these hair cells are covered by a membrane called tectorial membrane. So, this tectorial membrane covers the hair or cilia of the hair cell. Okay, here are some, you know, some supporting cells like, you know, between these cells, there are supporting cells like dater cell and here you can see Hansen cells, okay, these, uh, they are not of much importance in our talk today. Anyways, here in between them there are dater cells dater cell that supports these outer cells and here you can see the Hansen cells okay, but Hansen cells but today we are not going to discuss these Hansen cells and dater cells so this is the actually endolymph uh, sorry I mean this is the cochlear duct okay this bit between chamber this is scala media or cochlear duct and this is scala tympani and this is scala vestibuli so inside this scala media or uh, you know cochlear duct there is organocordy the organocordy rest over the basilar membrane okay this is the basilar membrane and this is the racinar membrane racinar's membrane and this is the basilar membrane basilar membrane so and this is the tunnel of corti once this sound once this sound comes from here and it strikes in the tympanic membrane and through the ossicles it is transferred here and once the vibration is transferred into here the fluids 
the cochlear fluid, the perilymph and the endolymph gets vibrated. Once the cochlear fluid gets vibrated, the cochlear fluid that is present here, perilymph and endolymph, they vibrate the basilar membrane. Okay, once the basilar membrane is vibrated, now the transduction process starts once the basilar membrane is vibrated okay once the basilar membrane is vibrated what happens is these here cells these cells here gets rubbed over this tectorial membrane once the hair of these hair cells or the cilia of these hair cells gets rubbed into this tectorial membrane what happens is let me draw a separate structure of this hair cell suppose this is the hair cell okay and each hair cells are supplied by this neurons knob cells from the spiral ganglion okay. and once these hair are stimulated the channels from potassium channel open channels from sorry potassium ion gets open so potassium ion influx occurs here once the potassium influx occurs this occurs voltage fluctuation due to the voltage fluctuation there occurs production of something called cochlear microphonic this cochlear microphonic is nothing but it's AC voltage that is created here once the potassium ion gets in flux. So once the cochlear microphonic or this potential is produced, uh, this causes influx of the calcium ions in the lower segment. Once calcium ion flux occurs, it causes you know um, it causes the vesicles it causes the vesicles you know suppose if this is the nerve ending okay if this is the nerve here this is just an example but here are many neurons it's not only one here so this calcium causes you know release of neurotransmitters from the vesicle This is neurotransmitter. Release of neurotransmitter from the vesicle arcus due to the cochlear microphonic potential that is created in the you know, upper segment of the hair cell. The cochlear microphonic potential once produced in the hair cell in the upper segment, it gets transferred down. And once it gets transferred down, it is, you know, um, taken by these neurons and once the neurons are affected by the cochlear microphonic potential it causes influx of the calcium inside the neurons due to the influx of the calcium in the presynaptic you know membrane of the neuron it causes efflux of the you know neurotransmitters by the vesicle and this causes, you know, or this triggers the production of neural impulse, which travels through the spiral ganglion and from the spiral ganglion to the cochlear nerve and all the way through this cochlear nerve into higher centers. Now that we have discussed two of the steps in the mechanism of hearing. The first one being conduction of the sound and second one being transduction of the mechanical sound into the electrical energy. And now let's come to the third point that is neural pathway or conduction of the electrical impulse to the brain. So as I already discussed that the electrical impulse are produced from the sound waves and the electrical impulse all the way through these hair cells are taken by these neurons which are supplied through this you know spiral ganglion and from the spiral ganglion they are collected 
into the cochlear nerve similar type of you know nerves are collected from other parts of the cochlea there are many spiral ganglion in the cochlea okay and from different spiral ganglion these fibers come together and forms the cochlear nerve the cochlear nerve this cochlear nerve is nothing but it's a combination or aggregation of the central axon of the spiral ganglion and this cochlear nerve this cochlear nerve they come this way and they you know make connection with the ventral nuclei and dorsal nuclei dorsal nuclei in the brain stem and from these nuclei the you know the crossed fibers and the uncrossed fibers okay uh, these are the crossed fibers uncrossed fibers and crossed fibers uncrossed fiber and crossed fiber they come into the superior sorry the crossed fiber and the uncrossed fiber crossed fiber and the uncrossed fiber they um, get aggregated they get aggregated and come into the superior olivary nucleus from the superior olivary nucleus they go into the lateral lemniscus from lateral lemniscus they go into the inferior colliculus colliculus I might have done spelling wrong anyways from inferior colliculus they go into the medial zaniculate body okay from this medial zaniculate body they go into the auditory cortex okay if this is brain then this is your superior temporal gyrus and in the superior temp let me write this superior temporal gyrus in the superior temporal gyrus there is a brood money area there is you know brood man here is brood money area number 41 which is responsible for the interpretation of the sound um, waves you know which has come in the form of in the form of you know electrical energy or electrical impulse so this supertemporal gyrus auditory cortex interprets this nerve impulse and in this way the sound is heard so this is the mechanism of hearing chart now let me discuss a uh, few points that i left before um, in conduction you know what happens is when the sound waves come here it strikes this membrane and all the way through this ear ossicles it goes into this liquids cochlear liquids okay but what happens once these sounds strike or the vibration strikes the you know liquids Okay, let me make it simple suppose you are inside the water in an ocean or okay and someone produces sound a really bigger you know loud sound so if you are inside the ocean so you cannot hear the sound because you know the sounds get reflected from the surface of the water so it's just the same phenomenon happens here once the sound comes here the sound gets reflected you know from this you know cochlear liquid so the sound energy is wasted right but how this human ear compensates in the loss it's interesting you know here is resistance you know impedance you know these cochlear liquids provide some impedance to the sounds that's coming through the external environment so there is certain mechanism 
you know, the natter has given that matches the amount of the sound that has been restricted by the impedance or the resistance. Okay, that phenomenon is called, you know, impedance matching. Suppose, um, suppose, um, uh, you know, um, okay, let me make it simple again. Suppose this much, this much sound was coming, okay, and due to this cochlear fluid, you know, only this much sound is being transmitted here. Now, who has this much sound been gone? Okay, this much sound was there at first, but this much sound has been lost. Now, only remaining sound is only this much. So, where has this gone? So, this has been reflected or been absorbed here around. So, this amount of sound that has been wasted by this impedance. Now, this amount of sound, okay, this impedance or this loss is compensated, is masked by three mechanisms that is present in the human ear. Okay, the first one mechanism is being the lever action of the ossicles. You know, these ossicles, these are like levers. Okay, this ossicle, this handle of the malleus is 1.3 times greater than the long process of this incus. So it provides 1.3 times greater advantage. Okay, likewise, the another mechanism is hydraulic action of this tympanic membrane. Okay, hydraulic action of this tympanic membrane. This tympanic membrane, what it does is the area of this tympanic membrane is much more larger than the area of the foot plate of this stapes. So the average area ratio or aerial ratio of these two, the tympanic membrane and the foot plate of the stapes, that comes out to be 21 is to 1. Okay, comes out to be 21 is to 1. And, uh, but this 21 is to 1, since this tympanic membrane, you know, since this tympanic membrane's certain part is not that effective in vibrating due to presence of this handle of the malleus, you know, the effective area of vibration is decreased. So finally, you know, subtracting all the non-effective area of the vibration, so finally, the you know average aerial ratio of the area of this tympanic membrane and this stapes foot plate comes out to be 14.1 okay this has been determined by certain experiments uh, okay this is a proven fact so i don't have to prove here anyways so this is the average aerial ratio of the tympanic membrane of the effective vibratory area of the tympanic membrane and the area of the foot plate so if we multiply this 1.3 is to 1 and 14 is to 1 if we multiply these two ratios then we get a transformer total transformer ratio okay and that turns out to be 1.3 into 14 equals to something 18.2 okay 18.2 is to 1 that nearly equals 18 is to 1 so finally the transformer ratio of this you know average aerial ratio and you know the lever action comes out to be 18 is to 1 so now that I've discussed, uh, you know, two process that, you know, amplifies uh, the sound, that is lever action of these ossicles and another is hydraulic action of this tympanic membrane. And the third one is, uh, since this tympanic membrane is quite a bit curved, and this curved structure also helps 
in amplification of the sound it makes more efficient you know um, uh, we can analyze this on our own uh, the you know the carved area the carved surface of this tympanic membrane you know this uh, helps you know quite a bit in true and fro you know vibration of this tympanic membrane so these are the three processes that amplify the sound lever action of the ossicles and the hydraulic you know action of the tympanic membrane and the carved membrane effect okay and the final point that I'm going to discuss is suppose if somebody tells you there is tonotopic organization tonotopic organization of the sound wave in the basilar membrane or you know in a gross in the cochlea then what does it mean let me discuss that suppose this is your basilar membrane okay this is your basilar membrane okay this is uh, this looks something like this okay this is cochlea if the cochlea is spiral then basilar membrane should also be spiral okay this is your basilar membrane okay so what happens is this is basilar membrane and once the coiling you know once you go up once you go up in the cochlea the length of the basilar membrane goes on decreasing okay this spiral lamina the length goes on decreasing once you go as you go up in the cochlea so once its uh, length or this spiral lamina's length goes on decreasing the length of this basilar membrane goes on increasing okay so as you go up the length of basilar membrane the length i mean the transverse length okay the transverse length okay this transverse length or you can simply say white okay? because this is more of a white okay? the length of the basilar membrane goes on decrease sorry increasing as you go up so what happens is suppose somebody is producing musical sound this is musical sound okay let me draw even this may not be correct okay suppose this is musical sound and this is 500 hertz this is 1000 hertz this is 1500 hertz this is 20,000 hertz sorry 2000 hertz and since this is 500 hertz this sound will of high rate the you know upper part of the basal membrane better and since this is higher frequency this will vibrate the lower part of the basal membrane you know effectively it will produce greater amplitude in here because higher frequency has capability to produce higher amplitude has capability to make the basal membrane vibrate with much more amplitude even if its length is short so these lower frequencies are meant to vibrate the upper portion of the you know basal membrane that's why the higher frequency sound vibrates the lower portion of the basal membrane and the lower frequency sound waves vibrates the upper part of the basal membrane that's why the impulse the neural impulse of the higher frequencies it's sent to the brain through the lower portion of the basal membrane and the higher frequency impulses it's sent into the brain through the upper portion of the basal membrane this so at the same time when a music is played at the same time different parts of the basal membrane are stimulated okay so from different parts of the you know basal membrane the neuroimpulse 
is sent to the brain. So this is called tonotopic organization of sound waves in the basal membrane. And this is described by the traveling wave theory of bone Bekesi. Bone Bekesi. Okay, so I've come to the end of this video. Thank you.